What's up, guys? I'm here with my main man, Harshal. Today, we have a special talk, uh, and we're talking about retention, why you are losing clients and how you can keep them. So one of the biggest things is customer service. Sales is great. And I know we're always talking about sales and scaling your business and driving more and more sales. But at the same time, customer service is the heartbeat of your company. So as Harshal drives in these leads, you guys are closing them. But then what happens after, right? Do you realize that sometimes you have more clients falling off the books than you mm. would like? This is this is what we're talking about, man, because the way you're really going to scale your business is making sure that you have A1 customer service. Mm. So th even with you, Harshal, with your, your business, we got to make sure that we're we're getting these clients results like they are yeah. and that they're making sales. You're running your business properly so that way you could be successful, you know, in yeah. every area. So one of the things that I wanted to start with, man, is and I know everyone on this that's watching this right now, if you have customers and you're actively in the business, sometimes you'll get that random text message or that email from a customer and, and they'll say, hey, man my credit score dropped. That's a little bit, that, that's alerting. Cause when you, when you look at your phone and you're like, Oh, the, the credit score dropped, you know that they're not happy. And so yeah. now this could sometimes be a very easy fix. Sometimes it's a misunderstanding on their part, mm. but what a lot of you are doing is because maybe you're wearing a lot of hats. You know, you're, you're doing some marketing, you're doing customer service, you're making sales calls and you try to do, you try to get it easy out. So the first thing you do is respond via text or you re respond via email. But sometimes that's not a lot of times that's not good enough. If the client is irate and they're mad, put yourself in, in your client's shoes for a second. Mm -hmm. If you hired a credit repair company and your credit score dropped. You're going to want to know what the hell is going on. Like I'm paying you. Why is my score instead of it going up? Why? Why did it just go down? So. Instead of texting them and emailing them and taking a way out, it's better if you actually pick up the phone. Because let me explain what happens. When you mm. send a text message or an email, I get it. You're trying to be helpful. You're trying to you know, type out a, 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 an explanation of what happened. But you got to think about the temperament, the mindset that that customer is currently in. They're mm. not happy. And you, you don't know because you haven't talked to them yet. You don't know on what level of mad they're, they, they're at, right? They mm. might be at a freaking level 10. And so this is why when you respond via email or via text, even though you mean well, because that person's in, in, the, in, a, in a mad kind of mindset, their temperament, they can read your text message or in your email. And sometimes it may not be with the same temperament that you sent it with. So think about it. If you're angry, you're probably going to read that text message or that email with an angry temperament. And that's why sometimes you'll go back and forth via text and via email with that customer and nothing gets resolved. Mm. As a matter of fact, sometimes they may even get more mad because all they're getting is text messages and emails from you. Yeah. They want to, they want to hear from you. A lot of these people, especially what we do for a living, they they want you to hold their hand as much as possible. They yeah. want to be heard. So the moment that you pick up this phone and you call them, hey, Mr. Or Mrs. Jones, what's going on? I got your text message. You said that your, your credit score dropped. Well, hey, let me actually explain to you what happened and why this happened. And mm. then understand that we can fix this. It's not a problem. But it's not going to have the same powerful effect as if you text or email them. So I promise you right now you're losing deals because you're not truly, truly communicating with the client the way that they want to be communicated with. You have to pick up the phone and call them. Another reason why you might be avoiding actually picking up the phone, maybe you don't have the proper training. Maybe you get intimidated. You get irritated because you don't know how to deal with an irate client. Yeah. That shows that you need coaching. That shows that you need mentoring on how to deal with these clients. And in our coaching program, we show you exactly what to say. We give you template emails. We give you text messages and we give you scripts so you can call them over the phone and handle it. As a matter of fact, I even have live calls on our coaching program where you can see me handling these type of calls, exactly what we're, what we're discussing. 
That's all in our coaching program. The other thing is, you know, I would recommend having a nurturing email campaign. Mm -hmm. A nurturing email campaign, a lot of times is going to prevent a client from being irate and being so mad because you're reaching out to them uh, at least, I would recommend at least twice a week. And the, the nurturing email campaign, just so you understand what I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be about their specific credit. It mm -hmm. can be general information about credit and you're more just educating them once to twice a week via email. By you doing that, it allows the customer to know that, man, this, this company that I hired is actually reaching out to me. They're feeding me and constantly, you know, educating me on the process, giving me general information. Yeah. Again, it's going to, it's going to make them feel like you're holding their hand and, and they're, and you're coaching them without you having to take time out and actually calling them. So it's going to kind of fill in that void a little bit. So really think about, you know, creating a, a nurturing email campaign. Yeah. Um, Another, another thing is if you guys don't know where to go to like create an email campaign, listen, if you're not using chat GPT or some kind of mm -hmm. AI, you know, you know, stuff that they got out now, like I'll use chat GPT for almost everything. I'm telling you, um, let me give you an example. Like you just go to chat GPT and type in, yeah. create, create an email campaign, a nurturing email campaign for my credit repair clients. Mm. And then it'll pop up. And then you just. You know, again, you if you have Go High Level, if you have Credit Repair Cloud or whatever software you're using, you know, you might be able to just integrate that into your software. Mm. And that way, again, you start sending out those emails once or twice a week. That, that's going to, again, that's going to really help keep your clients on ice until their next update. Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah. Would you agree with that, Harshal? Yes, sir. I, I do. And I, I feel like there is another reason, like, you know, why there is like you know churn rate when it comes to credit repair business is mm -hmm. not setting up you know a proper expectation like how much how many months yeah. it's going to take etc you know upfront yeah. you know if you set a proper expectation i feel you know they will also not have any issues with that yeah no i i agree 100 percent, man and so when it comes to that this is exactly what i say and this is kind of a, a blanket response but i tell people listen expect to be in our program an average of six to seven months. Now, if we look at the credit report and maybe it's worse, hey, I might want to tell you eight or nine months. And this is exactly what I tell the client. I would rather tell you seven to nine months and yeah. then we really get it done at five. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I always want to under promise and over deliver. Because yeah. if I tell you that it's going to be done in three months, for example, mm -hmm. just because mm -hmm. I'm trying to sell you and get you onto my program. Well, mm. what if I what if it takes me five months, but I told you three? Guess what? Mm. That customer is going to be pissed. They're yeah. going to be mad, even though five months is not a long time. It's not at all, right? It took them. Yeah. It, you know, credit repair is not an overnight process. But when you try to exaggerate your services just because you're trying to make a sale. Mm. That's you creating a nightmare for yourself. Like you have at that point, you have no one to blame but yourself. That's why that, I mean, you would be mad if somebody, if you felt lied to as well, right? You got to, I always put myself in my client's shoes. How would I feel if yeah. somebody told me that, right? So, mm. you know, always under promise and over deliver, uh, even though you know that you could fix their credit in three months, tell them five. Why? Because the outcome yeah. of that is going to be better. You told them five, you get it done in three. And guess what? Now they're super happy because you actually delivered your services two months earlier than what you said you were going to do. Mm. Right. So that's, that, that's huge. Uh, again, you want to always give your clients realistic expectations because you will save yourself a headache. And, and by the way, you're not going to lose a client if you do that. Cause some of you are thinking, well, man, if I tell my clients five, six months, they may not want to sign up because Joe Schmo credit repair company is telling them that they're going to fix their credit in two months. Mm. I mean, you know what a person with a real, with a, with real common sense knows that it's not going to be done in two months. Yeah. That's why they didn't sign up with those people that told them two months because yeah. it's too good to be true. So you might as well be honest with your client and tell them that, Hey, it takes time. Yeah, They don't want to be sold. They want to be educated. They educated. want the truth. Yeah, Ab absolutely, man.
Yeah. And the third, the third reason why you might be losing clients is because maybe, especially for those of you who are just starting off, I get it. You're, you want to, you know, do, you want to have your hands on everything. And mm -hmm. I, and I get that. But when it comes to scaling, you have to understand that there's only so many hats that you can wear. You have to be able to delegate some of this stuff. And you might be losing clients because maybe you don't you don't have a high success rate at removing repossessions. Maybe you don't have a high success rate at getting deletions in general because you're so brand new to this. Mm. And you have to expect a learning curve, right? Yeah. I mean, let's say you went to school to be an electrician, right? And you went to school for two years to be an electrician, but now you're actually on the job and you're hands on and you're mm. like, oh, oh, crap. This is not like in the books. Like, you know, you could there's a difference between learning in the books yeah. and an actually on job, you know, Practically. learning totally different things. Yeah. Just like right now, we might get 10,000 views watching this video. And I'm going to tell you right now, you could watch a thousand hours of YouTube videos that does not make you a credit repair professional. I'm yep. telling you, if I watch a thousand hours of how to mount a TV on the on the on the wall and then my TV sideways, that is it's because that's not what I do for a living. They make, you know, they make it seem easier. So you got to understand that when you're on the job, it's not as easy. So you may want to consider if it's not working out for you, like the disputing process, you may want to uh, switch up your disputing process. Either maybe you're disputing it and it's not working out. Or maybe you're outsourcing it already to another company mm. and that's not getting your client's results. Well, if you're paying someone to do your disputing or a company and they're not getting your client's results, you got to switch that up immediately. Why? Yeah. Because that that's your reputation, man. Like people are paying you so that way they can get results. And if they're not getting results within the first 30 to 60 or 90 days, they're going to think you're, even though you're not a scam, they're going to think you're a scam because they paid you and they're not getting results. So you have to really think about your protect your personal reputation as a, as a human being, because mm. listen, your name is everything. Once you mess up your name, it's hard to recover from that. Mm. And true. then the second thing is you got to think about your business. You know, you don't want your business name that you worked so hard to build or are building. You don't want that to be tarnished by somebody else who's not getting your client's results. So switch that up. Very important. Another thing is if you want, if, if you, if you're in this situation and I'm speaking to you, if you want us to dispute and send out the letters for you, we do Metro two, we do factual disputing, we do AI letters. We send out the letter certified mail if you want. I mean, we can do the disputing for you. So just contact us and we can, you know, you give you a free consultation and we'll tell you all about it. But yeah, making sure that your client's getting results is super, super important. So yeah. that's a third reason. Now there's in our coaching program, we go in super detail about this because in our coaching program, we don't just teach you how to sell. I can teach you how to sell all day, you know, but at the same time, teaching you how to sell is not going to run your entire business, right? Just because yeah. you're passionate about credit repair, even if you know how to dispute and you're getting your client's results, it doesn't mean that you are going to be successful. You have mm. to be able to articulate what you do so that way the customer understands why they're signing up and they're also able to justify the price that you're paying. Mm. So we won't get into it on this video, but make sure that you are pricing your credit repair services properly so you're yeah. maximizing your profits. And if you have questions about, hey, Rob, am I pricing? Is my pricing too low? Is it too high? Contact us. And that's something that we can help you out with as well. Yes, sir. Absolutely. And like another thing is, uh, you know, it's easier to sell older clients compared to selling it to new ones. You know, let's say like, you know, somebody wants to cancel the membership. You yeah. know, you can just hop on the call, you know, just try to, you know, have the conversation with them. Face your fears, you know, try to sell a uh, like old client compared to like, you know, it's very easy to sell them compared to, you know. A absolutely. Absolutely. Whether, yeah. And that's another thing, whether you're picking up the phone or yeah. that's, that's the whole point of the, of the um, nurturing campaign too, is that you, you can have a nurturing campaign for active clients mm. and all of the clients that maybe quit the program because 
either they weren't seeing results or maybe they were they ended up back into some financial trouble and yeah. they couldn't finish paying so they stopped you can create a, a, a nurturing campaign just for inactive clients to reach back mm -hmm. out to them and that's something that you can do as well i recommend even the leads that harshall brings in if you have their name and their email you should have an entire campaign an email yeah. campaign reaching out to those people yep. because sometimes it's crazy man the, the 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 customer that you're texting that comes in your inbox they'll say hey can you call me i want to talk to you about my credit right they're reaching out to you you call them and they don't pick up the phone you're like what yeah <laughs> even though they just told you to call them so you know that's why you have to have a backup plan uh a backup plan for your backup plan you know yeah. and then you keep dialing you know, like my old boss used to say, smile and dial, hit those phones, because that's another thing. If you're not making enough dials, you're not going to you're not creating opportunities. Don't get spoiled with all the leads that Harshall's, you know, giving you. Yes, you're going to get new leads coming in daily, but you got to make sure that you're maximizing every yeah. single lead in every way possible. And the best way to do that is by picking up the phone and calling them. You're yeah. not going to close deals on a high level. You're not going to close deals through text message or by email. You're not. The whole point of texting or emailing them is to get them on the phone yeah. so you can build relationship. Credit repair, guys, is about relationship. Mm. There's a million credit repair companies out there. What separates you from all the other companies? Relationship. Mm. That's so a good point, bro. That's exactly. Yeah, that's exactly. That's a big part of what we teach, you know, in our in our sales aspect of our coaching program. I'm not going to teach you how to be some shady salesperson. I'm going to teach you how to be a true educator so that way you can articulate it in a way mm. that the clients automatically want to sign up. So when you hit them with a price of $1,200, they're going to say, oh, that's it. They're going to think $1,200 or $900 is cheap because of all the value that you've delivered. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Very bro. important, man. Yes, sir. Awesome. That's all I got for you today, man. So make sure you guys were taking notes. Make sure that you like, share, and comment. If this yeah. helped, make sure you also reach out to us at Rob the Credit Guide, robthecreditguide.com. Yes, sir. And guys, if you're looking for more credit repair leads, I'll also leave my info in the description box below. Just go ahead and schedule a free strategy session with us. Okay? One Until last, next last time. thing, guys. So yeah. if, if you're wondering who generates my leads, is this guy right here, him and his team generate 90 to 95 percent of our leads from my entire sales team. We have two offices, one here in Dallas, Texas, and another one in Tampa, Florida. And him and his team provide all the leads. So if you're looking for someone that's going to generate quality leads with qualified customers, make sure you hit up harsh. Yes, yeah, sir. Tell them, tell them how, how much you generate every month, bro. Tell them. We, right now, we're doing 100000 a month, and we're about to kick it up right now. So that's gotta, gross income that's coming in. So I'm teaching you guys how to make – if you're starting off, if you're realistically just starting off, you don't even know anything about credit, you're just getting started, within the first 35 to 45 days, you can easily make ten grand. And that's mm. if, if it's just you. If you yeah. start building a team, man, we're talking about thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a month. So yes, if you sir. guys are serious, really want to put in this work, go to robthecreditguy.com and get your free coach, coaching session. Let's get it, guys. Thank you, bro. Awesome. See yes, you sir. guys at the top. Let's go. Yes, sir.